And bada boom. And hello everyone and welcome back to episode 68. Uh, you are back with your boys. No, you didn't click on the wrong fucking station. Otherwise, you would have been listening to that stupid ass Jersey Boys episode. But <laughs> instead, this is what you get. You get Jaws, you get Piranha, you get Faye, you get Farm. Bada bing, bada boom, realist guys in the room. How you doing? Well, I'm doing pretty good there. How are you, buddy? <laughs> you know, I'm fucking, I'm alive right now. I'm alive. You know why I'm alive, Faye? Do you know why I'm alive? Why? Because I wear a fucking mask. Right? That's why I'm I'm alive alive and I'm keeping other people alive. Because I, too, wear a fucking mask when I go to the grocery store or any other fucking public establishment. Because it's not a hard task they're asking us to do. Nope. But y'all, y'all, I see you motherfuckers out there lurking, creeping behind me, walking up to me, grabbing my ass like a night at the Roxbury. (laughs) Uh, fucking looking for your fucking your, your fucking cool whip cans to fucking uh, to huff. I see you motherfuckers lurking in the shadows, not wearing your mask, coughing on shit, open up doors, coughing on doorknobs. Fuck you. Right. <laughs> you can lurk on me all you want, just fucking wear your mask. <laughs> lurk and jerk. Faze phase ready for everything. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hey. Just put on your mask and use some hand sanitizer for lubrication. We're good to go. You mean wash your hands, wash your ass. But aside from that, I'm sick of fucking Corona. Sick of the fucking death rates. Sick of all the stupid shit. What's right. up? <laughs> and yeah, we're never going to get over this if all these conspiracy theorists and people making everything political and shit like that would stop complaining about a simple task as putting on a fucking mask. I cannot express that enough. Like, I'm usually not very vocal, but God damn it, people put on your goddamn mask so we can get rid of this shit. And I also, this cancel wanna- culture cancel cancel your fucking selves shut the fuck up you fucking pussy ass motherfuckers <laughs> grow a set of fucking balls all right everything was fine to all you fuck started complaining about everything who cares if there was dicks in disney movies who gives a <laughs> shit if fucking statues were named after fucking people who you deem as racist get the fuck over it yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop bringing up our old precious movies and go, oh, they offended me 50 years ago. We got to delete it. Got to get rid of it now. Fuck you. Fuck all y'all. Yeah, but, that's, we said it. Fuck y'all. So anyway. I'm, I'm thanks some, for tuning uh, in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, this, this concludes episode 68. Ain't that great? <laughs> <laughs> no, but if there's anybody I want to fucking turn off the station right now, if it's if it's any if any of you out there listening that think that this virus was created by Democrats to get rid of fucking Trump, go fuck yourself. I don't want you listening because I'm more about quality of the listeners than quantity. And losing you would not fucking hurt my feelings. That is the dumbest fucking theory I've heard out of all the fucking theories on coronavirus. Yeah, you know, those are the same people that think like 9-11 was an inside job or that it was fake and it was all computer 3D'd, Mark. Um, you know, <laughs> you fucking ass clowns. That's what you guys are, fucking ass clowns. Yeah, so shut the fuck up and put on your mask. Put on your mask and wash your chunky ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But other than that, I mean, you know, we, we started doing the mandatory mask things at work today. Most customers complied, or if they didn't have a mask, we're, you know, doing a kind of a soft opening with it. We're like, okay, well, next time you come in, we're requiring customers to wear the masks. Most of them were like, okay, we had a couple of uh, make America great again fuckers. <clears throat> we're like, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, well, then we're not going to serve you when you come back. So it's as simple as that. <clears throat> I mean, like, I, I wear a mask when I work, and it fucking sucks. But, like, when I have to wear safety glasses, I can't wear the mask. I got to pull the mask down a little bit because otherwise it's all fogged up. And what, what am I? I'd rather breathe contaminated air than fucking saw my hand off. So, uh, you know, you just got to fight your battles. But after I'm done doing my little cut cuts, I put it right back up. So, I mean, it never fully right. leaves. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's always I there. That. I get that. But if you're refusing to put on a mask to do fucking 10 minutes of grocery shopping, then you're fucking pathetic. Come on now. Jesus You're an God. asshole if you do that. You know, just take really it. And you can breathe. I promise you, you can fucking breathe in your goddamn mask. You're just breathing against yourself, so that makes you think, oh, I can't breathe. 
No, you're just smelling your own hot breath, you fuck. <laughs> and chances are, most of you people out there aren't even getting laid. So take all those used fucking Durex condoms that you got from the dollar store by your bed and put it over your fucking head and just <laughs> suffocate to death while you're inside the store. Because that would make everybody fucking happy. Yes, this virus needs to fucking end. I miss, I want to go see my friends in Texas. I, I had so many different, I was like, 2020 is going to be the year that I travel. Guess what? Coronavirus said, no, you're not. And I was like, God. Damn it. But most importantly, I need everybody to chill the fuck out, put on your mask so we can get rid of this so I can start seeing my son more. I th- There's a big reason why I haven't been able to see my son for the majority of this year is because of the fucking coronavirus. And, you know, we his mom likes to take safety precautions. It's completely understandable. I don't want to put him at risk, especially when there's a bunch of dumb fucks running around here in El Dorado. Not giving a shit. So, yeah, chill the fuck out so I can be a dad, so I can go get drunk with my friends, so I can do all sorts of shit. You know, you uh, you brought up a topic I was going to bring up a little later on the show, but since we're on it, TFW, what what do you think, man? Like, I, I was I was fully on board that it was going to happen as long as Monster Mania and Jersey was happening because right. they weren't until fucking late uh, late August. So I was like, if if Monster Mania happens, then this shit's going to happen for sure. And then, sure enough, Monster Mania cancels, reschedules to March. Now we got Texas. Lloyd's opening up his fucking his HQ store and trying to sell old fucking autographs, which is the same thing Monster Mania does right. with their Monster Mania store. But they that kind of got more relevant once they started getting leery about like weary about actually having their fucking convention. So I just feel like now Lloyd might be following that same footsteps, same footsteps where he's going to just kind of hope that he rolls in some extra money. Off that to kind of compensate for it, but this right. year is fucking dead. Yeah, 2020 is canceled, people. Christmas is fucking canceled. Santa Claus is staying home, motherfuckers. But you, you think it's a no-go? You think it's over? I'm, I'm pretty... Fuck, I mean, the way things are going right now and the way people are acting and shit, I'm, it's a safe bet that it's not going to fucking happen. If I think I, one of the top I states... gamble on it, I would say, yeah, that it's not happening. Yeah, I think one of the top states that's fucking us is Texas. Texas, Florida, and then now my fucking lovely state of Kansas, it's spiking so bad right now, so it's slowly becoming one of those states that the rest of the country's fucking laughing at. Because we're stupid and we think that it's fucking fake. And it's, it's conspiracy. Coronavirus ain't real. <laughs> it ain't real, no. <clears throat> masks don't do nothing. It prevents me from spitting in your face is what it does. Stupid yeah. is stupid does. <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, if if Texas doesn't happen, I will be fucking devastated. Uh, I mean, I've been blowing my money on a bunch of horror shit. <laughs> so I mean, it's like I've already gone to TFW three times over. But um, right. you know, I'm I'm still I'm still hoping. I'm still fucking hoping. I still have that one little tiny little pubic hair of hope that it's gonna fucking happen. In the business, we call it a cunt hair. So you're saying yes. you have a cunt hair? Of hope. I have a cunt hair of hope. That Texas primary. Is gonna hashtag cunt hair of hope. There you <laughs> hashtag go. it. Yeah, now it's legit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, uh, have you looked at the uh, the like the store of the Texas Fried Mayor shit for like the old autographs and shit? Have you have you checked that out? I haven't looked at it. No, I see the link popping up all the time, but I haven't gone through and looked. I'm uh, I'm just looking through it now. Like they have a bunch of like Ashley Lawrence shit. They have a bunch of Clive uh, Barker shit. They have um, they have a lot of John Carpenter in there. And then uh, what else did I notice? I noticed that they have a, they have a couple George Romero autos in there. Yeah, they they seem to have a bunch of George Romero stuff just backed up since before he died. You know, <clears throat> they also have Piranha um, autographs from Roger Corman. <laughs> yeah, also uh, Fright Rags just dropped a Piranha line too. I'm like, well, I, 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 that was coincidental, people. I didn't pick that because I was like, oh, Fright Rags is doing Piranha, so I'm gonna pick Piranha. Too. Are, are you <laughs> fucking secretly organizing behind my back? Is that what's happening? Now? <laughs> Yeah, working on that endorsement deal with Fright Rags, you know. Yeah, I was gonna say it would be the first time a company has done that to me. So I mean, fuck. <laughs> no, it's coincidence. Just like it's coincidence that my movie theater is showing Jaws this weekend for Fourth of July weekend. So I think I'm gonna go see it yet again in the movie theater. As I'm going through this, correct me. Who the fuck is Karen Black? Oh God, that name sounds familiar. Couldn't tell you off the top of my head though. All right, so you don't know shit, so I got to look it up now. 
All right, I know everyone <laughs> out there who's who's fucking who's tuning in, not live. When I say I didn't know who Karen Black was, you're all like, "Oh, you fucking idiot! You don't know who Karen Black is." <laughs> so now I'm gonna look at Karen Black real quick, and apparently she's dead. Oh, mother firefly. Oh, okay, gotcha. That old bitch. I don't know. She did, bitch. But yeah, she did. Uh, <laughs> this place is dead anyway. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but no, they got a they got a George Romero auto on there for a hundred and ninety bucks. Holy shit! I'm I don't sure know. What, what do you think? Is that uh, w- would you pay that? No, not for a uh, side of shirt. Like I love George Romero and stuff like that. But for me, with autos, it it means more to me if I actually got it myself. And like if it was, you know. A low end price, like 40 50 bucks. Yeah, but, but the, it's going up each year because you know, as time passes and his, and his memory goes more distant since he passed, they're gonna boost up the prices on his on his autos and shit. And I, I missed my opportunity, so I don't I don't see myself paying that much for George Romero's auto. I missed my uh, I missed my opportunity twice. Yeah, yeah, bad move. <laughs> See, he was he was at the primary the year before I started going, so I just barely missed him on that. That was that great year that they had all the fucking slashers and the scream reunion and. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, would you pay that much for any auto, like 190 for an auto that you didn't get yourself? Well, I would say as long as it's authenticated, so I know it's real. I would I would be open to the conversation. If it's on something besides like a photo, like if it's on an actual like prop or something, then maybe. But I mean, since George is a legend, he's a legend. So I mean he's a horror icon. So but the fact that he's dead and you can no longer get his shit. I I've contemplated clicking the fucking buy button and digging digging for that secret credit card. <laughs> I've, <laughs> con- I've contemplated this, but I don't know. 190 for an eight by ten kind of kind of scares me a little bit. I think I think that most I've ever paid for an auto was probably Robert England. Yeah, hundred bucks, oh, 120 or whatever it is. It was a hundred at Frightmare. Was it a hundred? Yeah. And then plus my bar tab when I was getting drunk with him, you know. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, shameless, <laughs> shameless plug, shameless fucking plug. <laughs> Well, God damn it. That memory will never fade away. <clears throat> it's a cherished moment in my life. Like, you know, my son being born and, and getting drunk with Robert England. I would say my highlight for, like, guest-wise was fucking meeting Bruce Abbott. Because he was so he was so fucking nice and talkative. I was a little surprised that he was, like, that outgoing. Right, right, yeah. It's always the ones you don't expect. So they're actually, like, the more memorable ones when you talk to him and meet him. And the ones that you're hyped up for, it's more of just like, oh, yep, they sign your shit, and then you go on. Yep, it's like, go fuck yourself, wash your ass. <laughs> yep. Yes, people, wash your ass <laughs> and wear your mask. <clears throat> so, from all the raffles I've been winning, I just counted on my, because uh, I have them all hanging on my floor, because i got to figure out where the fuck I'm going to put them. And um, I've got 15 autos. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sitting in frames on the floor right now. <laughs> oh damn! You don't need wallpaper. You're just gonna have fucking photos all over the place. One, like a couple of them. It's a, it's the Kiefer. It's Kathy Bates, Martin Landau, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Andrew Bernowski, whatever the fuck his last name is. Right. Yeah. Uh, Nick Castle. Uh, I, I, Bill Skarsgård from uh from it. I got Skarsgård. A, yeah, I got something from him. Nice. nice. Yeah. All just hanging on the floor like pretty whores. Um, I would love for TFW to happen. I don't know, especially after these fucking cons people went to buying that fucking essentials kit. I mean, what are you going to need it for next year when the whole thing fucking goes away and you don't even need it? Right. Well, they were hyping that up there around right the time that we thought the shit was cooling down. And we were definitely going to be there in September, but nope. Have you have you seen their their website for their COVID updates? No, I that didn't know they had one. Uh, 
Yeah, TF, TFW. So they have a uh, in consideration of developments concerning COVID nineteen. Texas Friday weekend is still being planned to take place as scheduled. Our first concern is always the health and safety of our attendees. The current public health risk associated with COVID nineteen, as assessed by the Texas Department of State Health Services, is low. However, we are monitoring the situation and will update our attendees with any developments. Um, and then they say, uh, please follow any and all common sense guidelines, including the following. Please stay at home if you are sick. Well, can't stay at home if you want to go to TFW. Uh, please <laughs> wash your hands prior to attending and frequently throughout the event. It is recommended to wash with soap and warm water for approximately 20 seconds. Travelers from outside the U.S. are advised to check all government travel restrictions prior to traveling. Bring tissues to cover any sneezes or coughs. The hotel will have receptacles for proper disposal of tissues and trash. Right, and but that is your that, weekly need, TFW update. <laughs> well, with that, they need to be realist too and realize that not, not everybody's going to follow that at all. There's some nasty asses that go to these conventions, especially the super fucking redneck people. Like, that's they're not going to do any of that shit. All right, and we well, COVID, it's the devil, it's <laughs> the devil created by the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, uh, I want it to happen. Fucking so bad, so bad. I just I uh, I don't see it, unfortunately. Though I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe fucking Lloyd is working on a cure. Maybe he's gonna figure it out. <laughs> the only thing I visualize is just asking people before you go into one of the uh, convention floors, either room, just you're required to put on a mask. So like when you you know when you're going the rooms with the celebrity guests. Because I'm sure, you know, since they're the ones that are interacting with more people than any of us, you know, besides bumping assholes and elbows. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, we'll we'll be right up everyone's ass, though. That Saturday at that place, you shitting me? It's like a fucking, it's like a COVID night out. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) all right. And then, yeah, the bar probably wouldn't even be fucking open. So, yeah, I bet there would have to be a lot of fucking like restrictions, like the bar, like they would probably have the bar open, but it's all to go. Right. Um, you probably can't hang out in the fucking hallways. No, nope. everybody's gonna be sardined in their rooms when it's hangout time. Yeah, all the fucking guests will have the ple- the plexiglass windows in front of them. And then, like you know, like what about like the parties and stuff, like karaoke and shit? Dead. But how how could it happen? It couldn't happen. God, that's my one of my favorite parts though is fucking karaoke. That they, have, they always have those little fucking tables in there, and everyone's fucking always hanging on each other, fucking swapping like anal glands and shit. I mean, like mm-hmm. that's you're, half fun. You're fucked. Like it's not happening. Yeah, like a video I just saw of Michael Rappaport today. Fucking wear your fucking mask, you fucks. Fucking love that guy. He always goes on these great rants, and I love every single one of them. So those of you watching on YouTube, you can search up Michael Rappaport, wear your fucking mask. Or if you're listening, here's a clip of it right now. Oh, and we're back. <laughs> the power of editing. <laughs> ah, what a clip that was, huh? Yeah. Thrilling, right? <laughs> Real, really powerful shit, guys. Really powerful. I don't even know what the fucking clip was, but it was so powerful. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, can find it on my Facebook. So I'm like, motherfuckers, watch this. He's speaking the truth. He's spitting. He's spitting. <laughs> yeah. Damn, this motherfucker's spitting. <laughs> Literally, he's even like, I'm spitting on my camera right now. That's why I wear a fucking mask. So I don't get my dribble all over you. <laughs> Earlier today, it was announced that uh, Faye had a had a whole fucking storage unit full of rants he needed to go on. So I'm going to open up the uh, the floor for Faye. Oh, I pretty much, I've mostly covered, you know, because most of it was just, you know, fucking wear your goddamn mask, people. Please, it's not that hard. But another one, though, is, you know, our dear friend fucking Christy is trying to have a nice little grand opening and, you know, having some guests to come in, sign their shit. Well, somebody has an issue with one of the guests. I really don't know the fucking full story, but, I mean, don't shit on Christy's fucking praise. She's so excited about this goddamn thing, and she's still part of the fucking family. So it pissed me off when I saw this shit. And I wasn't the only one. I saw all the comments and stuff like that. So this fucking Desiree bitch or whatever the fuck. You just fuck her. Fuck you. If anybody knows this bitch, tell her I said fuck you. And that's from Andrew Faye. Not from the outside. It's from Andrew Faye. Fuck you, bitch. Go eat a dick. Now, Mike, I'll do the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Stop shit on people's parades. Goddamn. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like the you cancel know, culture bullshit. I uh, early, early before we started, I, I I told Faye that I had a I had a, a fuck a fuck you rant to go on. That was going to be brief and subtle, and I, mean, I was debating if I was going to do it or not. But you know what? Once an outsider, always an outsider. So with that, uh, <laughs> fuck you, Tristan, and fuck you, Destiny. Okay, first of all, you two fucking fools. Okay, listen, I understand you were on some shitty fucking indie movie and some stupid fucking shit happened, and it's very unfortunate. Absolutely unfortunate. It never should have happened, but the fact, it did. Um, therefore, you guys should have just went after them instead of fucking a year and a half later parading on social media, especially like what you're affecting a small business. Someone who's worked hard to fucking get that shit off the ground, moved into the fucking West Coast to fucking crush it and like make their dream a, like a fucking a, a thing. And during and, a time where small businesses are really fucking struggling. So, right. And you two are aspiring filmmakers, aspiring. Okay, let's 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 stop it. Let's hit that one right because you're you're shooting yourselves in the foot because now to the outside world, everyone associates you guys with drama. So you go on the fucking the store's fucking shit on their little comment thread, and then you just post your fucking YouTube shit about okay, like this is like this is all the problems. This is why this like this happened here with that. Okay, great, cool, that's awesome. Not the right place to do it. Not the right place to do it. It, if you think anyone outside like the bubble that you guys are in really know about fucking 1031 part two, chances are they don't, especially in toys. They have no fucking idea. They don't know who you are. So the fact that you're out there and then uh, trying to slander fucking Christy, and this is where you guys really fucked up. Cause first of all, fuck you too, because Christy is fucking great. She's a fucking kind soul. She is awesome. And she is not one to ever fucking go into that shit or even even discuss it. So the fact that you two are trying to fucking plan to her like that, I mean, fuck you, first of all. And then also in your post, you're like, oh, I consider her a friend. Let's let's stop the fucking let's let's pump the brakes. You guys don't even know who the fuck each other are. You know who the store. You never fucking bought anything, but I mean, you like you know of the (laughs) fucking store. So if anything, sit the fuck down. Uh, You should have handled your business a year and a half ago. If you're going to handle it now, great. But just fucking keep everybody out of it who has nothing to do with it. Yeah, stop pulling in people that are not fucking involved with it at all and just bringing them down. And like you said, they're trying to build their own little fucking movie empire or whatever. Well, they're doing it the wrong way because they're pissing off people in the process. and Nobody's going to give a shit about their shit whenever they come out, whatever the fuck they're doing. I don't give a shit. And I know and I'm not I, a fan now. If I hear their fucking names and there's a pop up, I'm like, I'm not checking that shit out. Fuck and you know, I was I was cool with Tristan prior to this. I was cool with him, and I was always willing to help him. Always willing to help him. All, any of my fucking film shit from all the stuff, from anything, any knowledge I have, always willing to share with anyone who's a filmmaker. Fucking Neil, anybody, anybody who ever wants to know shit that I know, I'm happy to pass on. But y- you fucked up, man. You you fucked up. Okay, I understand. It's a huge fucking thing. It's a problem. You need to address it with those people first. Instead of bleeding it out everywhere. And if you're going to come at a small business about trying to have a couple people for like for their store, for their grand opening, for signing, how about you go after the conventions instead of going after a small business who's just trying to have a couple people to help out boost their shit? So how about you go after Days of the Dead? Go after Monster Palooza. Go after fucking Horror Hound. Go after the fucking big dogs. Leave the little people alone who are trying to grind just like you. So uh, if you think you're doing a service by putting like these people on blast, you are not. You're an asshole. So with that, fuck you. That was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. See, that's exactly kind of what I want to do, but I'm not going to rant. See, though, you're the rant guy. <laughs> that was fucking gorgeous. I, and that is outsider approve. Both of us approve everything. He just fucking said. Slot machine sound here. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> right? Got you packed out. <laughs> Ah, oh, damn, this is this is a great fucking episode so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, get, we gotta protect Christy. I mean, fuck Jersey boys, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> right? We're just letting it all out, people. This would be uh, a good episode to respond to. Let us know your feelings on all this shit that we're talking about. Yeah, because I'm I'm sure I'm sure y'all out there, y'all y'all have seen some shit uh, about all this stuff on uh, online and everything. So you know, I'm always uh, I'm always curious to hear what people have to say. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to hear some feedback. You think if we're if we're overreacting or what? But yeah, I don't that. think so. I don't know. You've uh, you fucked with the wrong family, eh? 
I'm like the fucking <laughs> I'm Al Capone over here in these streets. All right, <laughs> this is fucking uh, a, a lucky loose fucking piss jug Chiano over here, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you brought up piss jug. That's a nice segue. Uh, by the time this comes out, I will already have posted the, the brand new artwork that that uh, I have presented, which I have now on the screen. This so this was my design. This was uh, my take on uh, the the two headed dragon. Then is now the outsiders of horror. We have the Undertaker and Paul Bearer for all you wrestling fans out there. Oh, my Undertaker, <laughs> <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> put on your masks, or you will rest in peace. Or oh, be really yeah. harmed in the hospital. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, that is not a fucking urn, good sir. <laughs> nope. What? What? Uh, what the fuck is that? Is is that is that a is that a piss jug urn? Yeah, it's a piss jug urn. That was my idea. Well, I was thinking, I was like, okay, Paul Bear holds an urn, and then immediately I was like, okay, make it a make it a clear urn with piss in it, <laughs> and have you hold it. <laughs> hold my piss jug, please. Oh my god! And the people that check it out, there's a couple little hidden Easter eggs on there too that you can find. So yeah, that's all I'll say about that. But yeah, I am the taker. Good, of course. You know, it only makes sense. You know, the the shorter one of the two would be Paul Bear. I love it. We're uh, tombstones. I see two RIPs in it. You know what? Um, I can see what it says. Maybe that's just an Easter egg for the online. You know, for people to yep. see. Go check it out. Go zoom in. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we can't give you everything over here. You know what the fuck you want for free. So um, we're just, you know, I do appreciate the old school little fucking Undertaker logo, though. That's uh, for the outsiders part. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said we couldn't use the exact Undertaker font because of copyright. But I was like, well, yeah, I'm sure you'll come up with something. And that's what a uh, good old Jack came up with. It looks pretty good to me. I approve. Yeah, yeah. yeah I dig it. I already ordered me a shirt. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yep. Well, send me the file, bitch. I'm gonna get me one too. <laughs> yeah, I will. When uh, when Texas doesn't happen, we can have fucking uh, we can invite all the uh, all the insta all the insta hoes and uh, all, all the Facebook followers and etc. and fucking our Bumble fans, uh, and um, yeah. we can have uh, our own <laughs> Texas Fried Mayor Outsiders uh, Sherry Yard Stream Yard fucking event. It'll be glorious. Yes, yes. Oh yes. Oh, my fur tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I even have a couple of outsiders of horror masks uh, on my way, so I can rock rock that shit at work and do a little advertisement while I serve some ice cream. <laughs> I like the ice cream. Um, <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie; I'm still fucking a little hot over that fucking crusty beef. I'm still yep. a little heated about that because that's it's a little fucked. Oh yeah, that shit pissed me off. Somebody sent yeah. me a message like, "What's going on with Christy?" I'm like, "I don't fucking know." And then I tried to look into it and. You know, things finally connected. I was like, "Oh, that's a, that's some fucking bullshit." Yep, that shit be fucked up, right? Yep, Chrissy Lone. She like like Farmer said, she's one of the kindest souls that you'll fucking meet. She's a yep. devil in disguise. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> she's got the biggest fucking heart. I mean, if you can't stand up for your bitch, who can you stand up for? You know what I'm saying, <laughs> right? Oh, damn. Uh, we miss you. We miss you, Christy. We love you. Yep. You bitch. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, you know this. Uh, this is Faye's episode. Just so everybody knows, uh, he's the one that picked Jaws in Piranha. Um, yeah. Obvious as you can see, the. Uh, well, hold on there, Geronimo. All right, listen, Columbo. Um, <laughs> as you can see, the uh, the picks over the last, you know, this week. Uh, are not nearly as good as the previous weeks, uh, but you know we're gonna we're gonna give Faye the old benefit of the doubt for the next week as well. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That, that seems like a nice segue to go ahead and announce next week. Then see how butt hurt you get about that. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so next week, you know, I've decided. Well, I was going to do Kevin Smith movies, but then another fucking podcast decided to do Tusk. So I was like, "Well, fuck! I don't want to look like I'm copying off them." So I picked other movies. So I went ahead and still stuck with the summertime theme and recording live for a live recording on July 10th is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Sleepaway Camp. Surprisingly, we haven't done either one of those movies. 
you think we would have done it by now after 68 episodes, but no. Wow. So, so what's your reaction to that, Farmer? Um, well, I'll put the camera back on me. All right. Uh, you ever seen Repo Men? Like the, the like the TV show or the no, Emilio no. Estevez movie? The Emilio Estevez movie. Yeah, I saw it a long time ago. Okay, well, blurry, um, but... just like they do, golf club. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, very, very good picks. Very good picks. Um, so next week should be a good show. And uh, since we do a show and tell segment, I'm pretty sure people can probably figure out what I'm going to show and tell next week. If you, if you are a follower of the show. Not giving it away. Nope. <laughs> you have to if tune you're not in, in the know, you're going to know. You have to tune in live on July 10th. At 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Live! Maybe. Only on YouTube. Because fuck Facebook Live. Facebook Live has been pissing me off. So I'm like, nah, I'm done with Facebook Live. We're going strictly YouTube. So only on the Outsides of Horror YouTube channel. Tune in and give us your opinions. Yes, Please. all them opinions, though. Uh, <laughs> well, not really not really a, a big discussion or anything like that. But something that's new with me, my, uh, my movie Blue Call. Um, which stars Katie LeClaire, Jack the Gee from Rescue Me, Jonathan Bennett from Mean Girls, who is Aaron Samuels, and Thomas Decker uh, from a shit ton of stuff, including the Nightmare on Elm Street re uh, remake. Um, so that movie got sold. We uh, put it, well, it's with the sales agent. We signed a contract. Um, Cannes, that big fucking f uh, f uh, film festival over in France or whatever, they had their whole virtual shit because obviously they couldn't do the actual thing. But uh, our, our film is uh, being hosted there uh, right now. So, um, and the coming weeks, we could have a distributor to pick it up. So that's pretty fucking exciting shit for me. Um, nice. So it'll be uh, kind of like my future my future debut for a distributor to put something out. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty awesome. Hell yeah. Congrats, bruh. Yeah, man. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and uh, <laughs> you guys might, if when you watch it, you'll realize um, you, you might hear a couple familiar voices from a certain podcast. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? The, we ain't got no clearances around here. Ain't no fucking agreements. It's a I'm gonna steal your voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's, it uh, it should be good. Movie movie probably gonna suck. But I mean, whatever. You know, if, uh, <laughs> if it had a good budget. Somebody fucking buys it. Well, let's make the next one. <laughs> Coming from the director's mouth, people. It might suck. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might. You know, the, the tomato, tomato, clonado. I mean, whatever the fuck you want. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> Uh, at least, uh, at least it'll be out there. It'll be somewhere. And then, uh, the next one, which is a work in progress right now is, uh, supposed to be fucking double, double the fucking size and everything. So, I mean, we will, uh, we will fucking see what happens. I might be doing these episodes from the fucking road. I might be on a fucking flight on jet blue somewhere next episode. <laughs> you never even fucking know. Right on. Just wear your mask. Yeah. I've always, always. <laughs> Oh, I got my mask right here. Koozie. <laughs> oh, I got a nifty mask that goes along with the show. Jaws, baby. Look at that shit. Oh, look at you. You fancy. Mm -hmm. oh, here, here's, here's my mask. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those that are just listening, it was uh, in the shape of a dick. <laughs> yes, yeah. It was tiny, so it was face. Uh, <laughs> fucker. <laughs> All right. Well, did you watch anything this week, buddy? Did I watch anything this week? You know, I had a fucking crazy fucking work week, and I've been writing this new script um, that's been taking a shit ton of my fucking time, but I did. I did. I did watch a couple fucking movies. I made time out of my busy schedule in life to go ahead and uh, watch some films, as they say. Because I don't watch movies. I watch films. Well, you do, you, you do that while I piss in the urn. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well, Faye's over there pissing in jugs, pissing in rugs, who the fuck knows? Him and Gizmo probably share the same fucking pee spot. Um, but what did I watch? I, I fucking, I always seem to forget this shit the second it, it uh, turns the camera on me. And uh, thanks, Faye, you fucking cunt. Um, oh, thanks. Oh, he's over there <laughs> jerking off like a troll, pissing into his fucking urn. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, sounds about right. Um, I watched Candyman, the uh, the OG, obviously. Right, um, right. I watched that. I love, uh, you know, 
I don't think Bernard Rose ever really got a good career after uh, Candyman, even before, rather. I mean, um, I didn't think he was that bad of a director. I thought he captured kind of like the urban fucking Chicago shit uh, pretty well. Um, I was always a fan of the uh, the original Candyman. Love Virginia Madsen. I fucking wish the fucking holy hell they would have brought her back, but I understand she didn't fit Hol- Hollywood's mold of being thin, so that's why they decided right. to leave her at home uh, sitting at a desk somewhere for a cameo appearance, um, which is very unfortunate. Um, what else did I fucking watch? I watched the Hellraiser 3 again be, uh, for some fucking odd reason, which uh, totally escapes me, but... Um, yeah, I watched Hellraise 3. What else? I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, the, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, Chris Swanson, uh, Donald yeah, my, Sutherland. My boy, Arquette. Oh, yeah, yep, and Luke Perry, R.I.P. Now 2-0. Oh, dana, 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 dana. His son, Jungle Boy, crushing it in A-Dub. A-Dub. Yep, yep. Oh, Jungle Boy. Um, so... <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, that's that's really all I watched this week. I didn't have a shit ton of, uh... Of, uh recent watches which is uh, kind of unfortunate because i had to make time for these two stupid fucking movies um so both other than that yeah you know i was just uh just busy writing writing my scriptures um <laughs> praise jesus oh, yeah praise him yep sweet t admiral um yeah that's uh that's about it man it's been working on this fucking script outline and shit because the uh, gears are fucking moving tires are rolling it's uh, it's fucking a lot faster than I anticipated, but uh, here we are. So, yeah. See, my my recent watches aren't long either because it, it's been crazy at work. I've been busy fighting with fucking friends and family over this fucking COVID shit. It's just been all over the place. But I I only watched one movie this week, besides the movies that were that were discussing, and and that was a uh, good old Mandy. Just I watched that again. Even though I already know I don't like it, I watched it again because of my beef with fucking Madeline over at the Guillotine Girls podcast. I watched it again so I can find more reasons of why that movie is fucking trash. And, yeah. What movie is this that's trash? Mandy. Oh, yeah, that shit's trash. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, indeed. I mean, I, I'm not going to put it in the dumpster fire. But it, it's not a dumpster fire. It's not. It really isn't. It's not. It has its. It has its cool shit and stuff like that. But she's uh, praising it like it is the second coming of Christ. Well, listen, Madeline, I love you, girl. Even if you do like Richard Brake, and I could give two shits less about him. But uh, <laughs> let's, Mandy. Okay, listen. Anytime you got these fucking segues with fucking fire and smoke and fucking. It's the weird fucking B-roll shots. I, I, okay. It's artistic vision, man. I don't give two <laughs> fucking shits, all right? Fuck that shit. Yeah. It's for the fucking hippies in the curve. Um, and the fucking hippies. You know, that's, 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 that ain't my jam. Uh, I'm, all, I'm all for Nick Cage. Love Nick Cage. Fuck yeah. Um, snake eyes. Um, but yeah, you know, M- Mandy was cool, but a lot of, it was fucking weird. It's like a psychedelic fucking desert trip movie for the most part. Um, apocalyptic fucking escape from New York meets LA times like 3000 on heroin. So, I mean, it's, it's okay for what it is. It's not in any, I don't think it's going to be in anyone's fucking top tens of uh, all time. So, uh, let's just well, unless you have bad there. taste in the movies like her, but you know, that's, that's her. Yeah. You know, bullshit artist. Bullshit artist. Did you see the, the announcement of one of Nick Cage's latest movies where it's uh, Joe Exotic? Pe- <laughs> people are people. No, people are calling it a rip off of Five Nights at Freddy's. Where, I don't know, it's some kind of like horror uh, animatronic type thing, like Chuck E. Cheese type of shit. I'm excited for that. I'm ready to watch Nick Cage fucking go crazy. Nick Cage on some animatronic killers or something. I don't know exactly what it is, but it sounds like he's going to go crazy in a Chuck E. Cheese and start killing some fucking robots. Did his <laughs> pig so. movie ever come out? Uh, no, that shit got shut down because of COVID. God damn it. No. Yep. Like I saw uh, the, you know, Robert Hall was talking about that. Just John like Wick, that. Nick Cage and a pig. <laughs> yep. He killed my pig. Mm-hmm. Nope, that hasn't happened yet. Just like the, the the weird ninja movie that he's doing that Robert Hall was working on, that also got shut down. Go ninja, go ninja, go, 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 go. You know, Nick Cage had a really good career raising Arizona, Con Air, fucking. I, I, what happened? Now he's just paying the bills. It seems like he probably he's doesn't even enjoy a lot of straight DVDs. He's got a lot of straight to fucking VOD type fucking movies these days. 
every once in a while there is a gym in there. Like a lot of people do like Mandy for some fucking reason. I, Nick Cage and horror, I will whatever. I'll, I'll always, I'll always give it a, a check mark, even if I don't like it. Mandy, I, it, I wasn't in love with it, but whatever. It's fucking Nick Cage in a horror movie, <laughs> right? This is where he needs to start doing horror movies since he's not on the A list. Every big blockbuster movie like he used to be. This is where he needs to do the more indie, fucking low budget horror films, and do the crazy Nick Cage acting and crush it, and people will will fucking love it just because Nick Cage is in there fighting some. <laughs> Some slashers and shit. Let's do it, Nick Cage. Come on. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, did you see that uh Beavis and Butthead are coming back? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's probably gonna have to be really fucking PC. They like I don't know. They, they can't they can't do a show about you and me, like in all actuality anymore. I don't think. Uh we'll see. Cause Comedy Central can still be a little edgy sometimes, like with like the roast and stuff. Cause it's on Comedy Central, it's not on MTV. So there won't be any music videos. They're not gonna be able to sit there and talk during a music video and shit. So it's more, more gonna be probably be like Beavis are Head on going on adventures and shit, like the movie was. I don't know, maybe yeah, but maybe we'll get indie band clearances for fucking music videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean you, YouTube, they could they could watch some YouTube videos and shit. To, like they like they did on their relaunch that MTV tried to last attempt, but that was just wrong timing on on the last reboot of Beavis and Butthead. But yeah, I'm excited for that. I love to meet some Beavis and Butthead. Boy, <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk one of the movies. Movies, you say? Yes, yes, yes. I think we're gonna kick it off with some uh, good old uh, Piranha. Yes, Perona. sir. Perona. From 1978, not the weird 3D one. That was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed the, the remake. I thought it was, it was a good time, especially 3D in the auditorium. But... What about 3 double D? The sequel, 3 double D. That was weird because that took place in a water park. And that, that, I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was interesting. But yeah, good old Piranha. This was a first time watch for me. I've always been aware of the movie. I've just never taken the time to, to watch it. To, uh, by good old Joe Dante of Gremlins fame and Burbs and what else has he done? One of well, the greatest he, sequels of all time, Gremlins 2. <laughs> I'm say he did fucking Gremlins 2. He did Gremlins. He did fucking Twilight Zone. We'll get a segment. Um, the Howling. Rock and Roll High School. But he co-directed that one. Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, he's he's done a lot of shit. Nice, nice. The did whole you, uh, Barry Mac, Tiger Cinema. He did that. When I when I was a child, when I was like twelve, when I was big into bowling, my my team <laughs> name say balls, but yeah, that too. Yeah. Bowling. <laughs> my my team name was the Piranhas. Well, it was what going was to be, but we couldn't figure out how to spell Piranha, so we went with the pros instead. <laughs> P i r h n n a s z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were asking adults. We're like, how do you spell Piranha? They're like, oh. Whoa. This is, you know, small town Kansas. So nobody knows how to spell. <laughs> nobody can figure out how to spell piranha, so we picked a different fucking team name. Spell it. Get a thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> That's some kind of dinosaur. We don't do that. <laughs> thesaurus. Ah, well, piranha. The fucking budget. Like, I don't know. It's it's kind of out there. It says it was either six hundred thousand or seven hundred seventy, but it fucking grossed sixteen million. Nice. I didn't know it was like I didn't know it was a successful like box office movie. I was thinking maybe it was more of a cult status type of thing. No, no. Apparently, uh, apparently it fucking it did okay. I mean, it took advantage of the Jaws success that was three years prior to when this movie came out by you know ripping off the poster. And yeah, and the, and the opening scene, which we, I mean, it's always nice to first five minutes get some boobies. Can't go wrong with boobies in the first five minutes. Boobies are life. Um, you know, I give a this. I like this little fucking tidbit. The uh, the film was released theatrically in the U.S. by uh, New World Pictures in um, 1978. Uh, given the proximity to Jaws 2, Universal had considered an injunction, but uh, Steven Spielberg convinced them not to. Oh, nice. Good job, Spielberg. Way to way, cool, way to give Dante his uh, his moment. Why did not fucking rip that from him, even if he did? Well, he's rip. obviously a Dante fan because he's the one that handpicked Joe Dante to do Gremlins. Because Spielberg was originally supposed to direct it, but he, he, I don't know if he had some kind of other commitments or something, but he was a producer of it. 
of Gremlins, and he picked Joe Dante to direct it. You know what that probably was? That's probably just fucking, uh, he realized, hey, this, you know, this guy can make a lesser movie, a lesser version of the same movie that I can for no money. So, you know what? I'm going to give him a, I'm going to give him a moment. Well, if (laughs) if you recall, when we reviewed the howling, there's a connection between the howling and gremlins. It's the same news reporter that's doing the report of, uh, terror downtown gremlins is also the same news reporter that you see at the end of the howling. So they're in the same universe. So, yeah, but not Prana. Well, maybe Prana is, I don't know. That'd be cool, though. Who knows? That's a hell of a world to live in. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, but after the five, the opening scene, which you know was a rip off of Jaws, but it was intentional. That was fun. But then it it, it really dragged after that five minutes. It took a while for it to take off because this, like I said, this is first time watch for me. Um. <clears throat> As as a first time watch, like what what was like your what like what was your reaction to it? Because obviously you like bad movies too. So I mean, what like right. where did that fall for you? Like what did you think? I I was a little excited about it just because I hear it has a cult status and there's a lot of, there's a fan base for it out there. Um, like I said, it starts off slow, but then when it picks back up, I was getting entertained by it. I mean, some of the close ups of like the piranha like eating shit, you can tell there's just fucking fish sticks <laughs> people fucking poking the, the fish around and shit like that uh then i saw a complaint about the old man that has his feet in the uh in the water when he's sitting on the dock i'm just like okay they're, they're as, as vicious as they are they're still just fish so why didn't the old man just fucking pick up his feet instead of letting him chomp away <laughs> and and then die because he didn't fall in the water he just literally sat there on the dock while his legs are getting chomped up and screamed, and then they cut away, and then we go back, and he's dead. Uh, Poor old dude, fucking douche. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like his nerves got shot. Maybe like he like was pissing and shitting himself during the whole fucking time. You know what I mean? But I, I, I love the uh, the sound of when the piranhas are attacking. It reminds me of uh, my old uh, VHS rewinder. I had a cool little, uh, it was shaped like a red Corvette, and the and the hood opened up, and I could put my VHS tape in there and rewind it. It was a loud, noisy motherfucker, and it sounded just like when the piranha are attacking people. That's what it reminded me of. Get your hand out of the water. <laughs> did you ever have a VHS rewinder, or did you just rewind them in the VHS or the in the VCR? Yeah, in the VCR, I never had one of those fucking old dinosaur fossil fucking things like you, you old fuck. No, I've never had one of those. <laughs> I've always seen them in movies and like in antique shops, but you know, I've never actually owned one. They existed. I had that, and right beside it was my uh, electric, uh, electronic uh, card shuffler where I could put two ends to the deck in there and it shuffled the cards for me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to search eBay right now and see how much they're charging for those. For a VHS tape rewinder? <laughs> be kind rewind bitch uh the average price for a vcr rewinder is 19 dollars. Hmm. there you go vhs collectors out there that'd be a nice little piece for people that are big into vhs these days just add one of those to to your little collection yeah that's the cool ones like like i said mine was shaped like a car i'm pretty sure they got all sorts of different different shaped ones out there it's like an old like answering machine for a phone <laughs> right. Oh, Gemini. Oh, they got an old school one. I'm making an offer right now. <laughs> I love the balls on this movie because like there's the scene where a bunch of little kids are getting chomped up and shit. And that's just that's something the cancel culture will fucking get pissed off about. How dare you let little kids get eaten up and in, in a movie? Hey, piranhas. How are you gonna die by a piranha? Let's cancel the <laughs> kill the piranhas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fucking so pussies! Jesus Christ. You know what the fuck? What would fucking Quail Man think? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I thought pussies is just fuck them kids. You know what I'm saying? Let them get eat. There, then there were some cool gore effects. Even though a couple of the like the heads that got chomped up and stuff like that were clear. They looked like straight up store mannequin heads with a fucking wig on it. It was weird. But I did appreciate the uh, piranha eating some titties. They were eating some titties in one scene. Like the, there's women trying to swim away, and they were they were shred up just chomping up on the titty. I'm like, oh, those are my kind of fish. 
<laughs> Those are my kind of fans. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I did enjoy it when it, when the credits rolled. I I wasn't mad that I picked this one. I, I I like it. I but I know that you apparently didn't. What's your feeling on Piranha? Um, actually, I did like it. I thought it was okay. Oh, <laughs> you fucking asshole! Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen it like maybe twice over the years. Um, I rewatched it again this week. I think I watched it on month Wednesday or some shit. I mean, it was, it was okay. I mean, it's, I, I didn't know about the facts that it was like, oh, it was like basically half a million dollars, but it grows sixteen. So I mean, hey, whatever. Like that's fucking, that's good money. Uh, but they were just banking off success, Jaws two's yeah. fucking publicity. So thanks Universal for hooking them up. Um, uh, oh yeah, here's the. I mean, the this movie shit. spawned a ton of shitty sequels, but I mean, the the OG, it's it's an okay film for what it was. Yeah, I forgot that it even had sequels. Parada Triple D. Well, I mean, the remake had the fucking sequel. But there was a weird title to the sequel to this Piranha. I don't remember what it was. Like The Awakening or something like that. I don't remember. Some stupid bullshit The Last title. Piranha. The Last Piranha. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, this this movie didn't, didn't get my dick hard. So, I mean, you know, I didn't know. I don't have like way too much fucking love for it, but you know it's it's a it's a good film. All right, well we'll rate this bitch. All right, well I'll go first since it's your episode. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say for a piranha, I give it a four. Four. Yeah. All right. Zero down. Uh, cool moments. There's even a, a boat on boat explosion. Can never go wrong with a random fucking explosion <laughs> like that. You know, it's unrealistic as fuck, but still. And yeah, and then the prawns were fun. The 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 deaths were cool. Chomping on the titties were cool. Uh, and overall, I gave it a six out of ten. A six pickup sticks. All right, here you go. Yeah. And before we get into the final feature of the evening, Jaws, it's time for the show and tell segment. Damn it. Damn it. You want me to go first? Or you go first. Yeah, you go first. Yeah. All right. I figured I'd show off one of my little uh, autograph prize pieces that I acquired from Texas Frightmare a couple years ago when the entire uh, cast of cast and crew, bunch of cast and crew from the Chucky franchise was there. Uh, and I had all of them sign up on my. Uh, my Chucky Ultimate here. Let me blow it up. I got all sorts of signatures on this bitch. I mean, you got Kevin Yeager, uh, Fiona Dorff, who was a fucking peach. She was so sweet. Uh, Christina Lee's from part two. Got Don Mancini, you know, the brainchild behind it. Got uh, Catherine Hicks, the mom from the first one. Of course, we got Andy. Fucking... Alex Vincent. And then, of course, the man himself who signed the inside of it. I didn't even ask to, but he signed the inside of it. But I got Brad Dorf on on the actual inside of the part. Good Did he sign the outside too or no? No, just the inside. He was the first one to sign it. So I think he just assumed that I wanted him to sign the inside. And I didn't want to correct him. So I just let him go ahead and sign that. I was like, well, that's kind of a cool thing because you actually have Chucky's signature on the inside and then everybody else on the outside. So yeah, I, I love this piece, and that's probably gonna be the only thing I ever have that has multiple signatures on it. So I'm pretty yeah, you're not really a cast, uh, a cast like auto collector. Yeah, no, no, I'm more of an individual type. But I was, since I'm such a fan of the Chucky franchise, and that was gonna, I figured that's gonna be my one only opportunity to have that moment. That's where all my money went that year was getting all those signatures from the the Chucky franchise. Very nice. What you got for us, homie? Um, mine is also from TFW. Um, not last year. I think it was a couple years ago. Um, I have a... I've got a screenplay. Oh, I didn't know yeah. you got that. I've got a... It's Fright Night by Tom nice. Holmes. Got I Tom, had some... And I got Amanda Beers to sign over there. Nice. I had a uh, Tom Holland sign my my Blu-ray because he was there the first year I went to Frightmare. Them scripts though. Yeah, that's that's cool. I've always kind of, I've always wanted a signed script. I always thought that was cool. 
Like I almost bought that when I was uh, looking through Kevin Smith's website because he has signed uh, clerk scripts on there. But I went with the Jason mask instead. How much is he selling those clerk scripts for anyway? I think 40. 40. That's not bad. Yeah. Same price of, of my Kevin Smith hockey mask. That you can see over my shoulder. It's <laughs> right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right on. There's uh, this week's show and tell. Now let's get into yours. Mm. (laughs) All right, then. Let's get into a movie that is known by many as to being just one of the greatest films of all time. It is beloved. It's been an inspiration to many. And that is, of course, the good old classic Jaws. Uh, from 1975, which means we just hit the 45th anniversary. And of course, I picked up the 45th anniversary 4K steel book because that's what I do. And even after watching that on 4K, I'm still going to go to my local theater with my uh, Jaws mask on and go watch Jaws at my movie theater so I can watch it there on 4th of July because the movie takes place on the weekend of 4th of July. For the who? For the who? For the what? Where the. the yeah, where that shitty mayor is like, you know, gotta gotta stay open, gotta keep the beaches open. That sounds familiar, right? Jesus Christ, fuck COVID. It's the end of the world. But don't, but not fuck Jaws, because I am one of those people that thinks this is a fucking cinematic masterpiece. And then watching the documentaries about this movie, because like, do I really need to t- tell people the plot point? Everybody knows Jaws, but. It's just, it's just one of those movies that I saw as a kid. I mean, it didn't scare me because I live in Kansas, so it's not like it made me afraid of the water. Um, you live, I don't know, how, how close are you to a, a shore there, a beach shore? Uh, half hour. Oh, no shit. Yep. Did, did this movie ever make you scared to go in the ocean? Oh, I mean, it's filmed in, what, filmed in fucking Cape Cod. I live 30 minutes over there. Yeah, oh. So you can do the little uh, tourist thing and go check out all the filming location spots because they actually filmed everything in the same location. Yep. I've never actually been there yet, but uh, I could go there soon. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Are, are you an ocean man? Will you go into the ocean? Uh, up to my knees, and that's about it. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of iffy shit in the ocean. That's why I don't think I'd ever go in if I ever get to attend to a beach. I'll just stay on the beach. You know, it's Jaws fucked it up for me. I can't go in the water. Can't go in the water. Jaws no. fucked you up, huh? Yep. Can't go in the water. See, I had that effect on a lot of people. A lot of fucking people. People were afraid to go. And this movie is what made sharks scary because, you know, according to the shark experts, they're like that. They're really not scary creatures. It's just they're depicted as scary terrifying things and a big part of that is of course this movie jaws directed by the man steven spielberg and the hell they went through to make this movie he he's he still says of all the films that he's made this was the most difficult the most unfun he had making a movie but they got it done and obviously they don't regret it because it i'm gonna say they don't yeah <laughs> it's it's going down in in the whatever that fucking historic film thing is. It's it's in there in the Hall of Fame of Films, I guess I'll call it. I don't know exactly what it is, but the film restoration fucking Hall of Fame, whatever. Oh, you mean the fucking uh, the, the, the museum that they're building? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the fucking uh, cinema and motion picture fucking uh, like film museum or whatever it is in California. There's many different uh, publishers, uh, 100 Greatest Films of All Time, and I'm pretty sure you can find Jaws on those lists every single time and high up on the list. It, was just, it had a great cast, great acting. We're going to need a bigger fucking boat. That's me paraphrasing, but, you know. I don't know what, I mean, but how do you, how do you personally feel about Jaws? It's a it's a great movie. It's a classic. I hate the fucking fact that they're talking about remaking it, which I think is fucking asinine and stupid. As many but, shark movies are out there, they don't need to fucking remake Jaws. They can just do a different shark movie. I mean, that is shit on hit on history. I mean, like, fuck off. Go suck a dick. Go go do something else. And try to destroy a different movie, like Nerve or like Blue Demon. 
or fucking, you know, just go, go fuck something else up. All right. Leave, leave the good ones alone. You bitches. <laughs> right. Well, uh, we actually had a question from our boy Jack this week. Uh, he says of the various films that followed the shark as monster genre that jaws established, which ones do you guys like and which ones do you absolutely hate? So, you know, of all the different shark movies out there, do, which ones do we like? Which ones do we hate? Right now, I can tell you ones that I hate, and which is also the overrated pick of the week this week, is the fucking Sharknado franchise. Why is that so loved? I mean, I love my over-the-top cheesy shit. I watched all of the fucking Sharknado movies. The third one was probably the most watchable for me. But even with the over-the-top cheesy corny, it fucking all of them bored me. And I don't understand how they got all the cameo appearances they had throughout the franchise and just all the love and hype and the countdowns like, Oh, Sharknado five is about to debut in so many hours and seconds. And I, I don't get the hype. Are you a Sharknado fan at all? No, <laughs> <laughs> but a shark movie that I do love to answer the other part of the question is I love, I absolutely love deep blue sea. I thought that was fucking a great, it's like suspenseful shark Are they movie. Are making a third one or something like that? Yeah, they're doing a third one. I watched the second one. That was trash. But I love the first one. Of course, you know, what my favorite scene has got to be when Sam Jackson is doing one of his Sam Jackson speeches. Like, we go get this motherfucking shark. And then all of a sudden, chomp. Fucking eat his ass. And he's dead. <laughs> That's like a great, one of the greatest scenes I've ever seen in a movie. Do you have any uh, monster shark movies that you like? Uh, Jaws. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not big in the shark genre, is what you're saying. A uh, forty-seven meters down. I like both of those. There you go. There you go. Do you have one that you hate that maybe others like, or that you just thought was absolute garbage? Like, I, I mean, mean I mean, there's obviously garbage out there, like. Uh, the Jersey Shore one, uh, the three-headed shark attack, four-headed shark attack. No, those are any fucking good. Yeah, no. I mean, those are the only two uh, shark movies I'll, I'll even uh, recognize. <laughs> yeah? Did you not like Deep Blue Sea? Didn't really care for it. I hate that lead actor. I couldn't think of his fucking name. But I, I didn't ever like this shit. Thomas Jane? Yeah, didn't really care for him. Motherfucking Punisher? Motherfucking bitch. You're a bitch. You sound like a bitch, bitch. Watch your mouth when you talk about Thomas motherfucking Jane. Calm down when you come to dead. He had to shoot his kid in the fucking face at the end of the mist. Turns out he only had to wait two more minutes and then he went and had to kill his fucking kid. <laughs> That's a sad ending. Yeah, that was, that was kind of fucked. <laughs> that was fucked up. <laughs> well, you know, happens to the best of us. Does it? You know, having to shoot sick. our own children in the face, and then two minutes later, you see the fucking military coming through, and you didn't have to do that shit. Well, he's gonna get away free. So, <laughs> <laughs> God damn, the mist got my boy. That's what? right, the mist, the pterodactyls, they got him. Why is there a bullet hole in his face? The mist shot him in the face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not a bullet. That's a it's a rock. They pushed the rock. <laughs> they pushed the rock. The Dwayne, the Rock Johnson, through his face. If you smell what the rock is cooking, do you, <laughs> do you smell what the rock is cooking? If you smell what the rock is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, there you have the uh, nice little Fourth of July summer edition that I picked this week. The Jaws and Piranha, good old outsiders of horror. Uh, I mean, ratings right off the bat. I mean, of course, I'm going to give Jaws a Miss Davis. It gets a 10. It's a fucking 10. Are you going to go full 10 or? Gets a 1. With a 0, 10. Ah, you get a 10. You get a 10. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to give this movie a 10. I mean, yeah, no, you have Jaws. to. You have to. If you disagree, drown yourself in piss. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty of piss for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, so make sure you tune in next week for 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Sleepover Camp on July 10th. We're recording live. We will hope to see you in the chat. Also, make sure you wear your fucking masks. I can't say that enough. Wear your fucking mask. It's not hard. I mean, literally, just fucking boop, boop, boom. Fucking mask. Done. Um, dark man. <laughs> Where <are> you at? <laughs> Uh, pull that, pull that Bane shit. Thank you, Bane from Batman. Nobody knew who I was until I put on the mask. <laughs> knew that shit. Any any last words for a send off? I mean, those are my last words. Tune in on July tenth. Wear your fucking masks. Stop being a prick. Stop raining on people's fucking joy and parade, especially during these troubling times of twenty twenty. Don't Nobody be a cock. Need, no one needs the old petty bullshit. So yeah. Swing it, swing it to the people that deserve it, not the people that don't deserve it. Exactly. What about you, sir? Any parting words to our uh, listeners besides "Don't watch Jersey Boys"? I mean, <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming more than once. Uh, yeah, don't watch Jersey Boys. Go fuck yourself. Fuck you, Daryl Hook, and um, wear your mask, wash your ass, clean your pussy. See you later. Yeah, <laughs> shut the fuck up and put on your mask. And go fuck yourself before I fuck you in the ass. Bye. <laughs> Bye.